Hey, what's up YouTube? So today I'm doing uh, jam extensions for uh, either an interior door, exterior door, um, windows. If your wall is greater than uh, four and a half inches, a standard two by four wall, like on this, this is remodel, plaster and lath. So this wall is about, I need about an inch of a jam extension. And I ripped this one down, straight edge, could freehand it on a table saw, but I just use a straight edge with my circular saw. Um, what you do is measure your projections to the flush with the drywall, both top and bottom. You could snap a line, um, use a straight edge, or you can hold up your jam, get it flush, and scribe the back side with your pencil, um, and then freehand it on your table saw. Side jams, you know, you get top, bottom, middle, um, up here, you can take a, you know, your speed square, throw it across, and see where you're at on the head jam on both sides. And I'm at an inch on each side on the top. And then overall for my head jam, it has to be 32 and a half. So I'm gonna go cut that and rip it on my table saw and I'll show you that. Um, here's the pine jams I picked up. So they're stained, um, three coats of poly, so they're ready to go. So here's the drop of my first rip on the left side jam. Obviously, since I already finished mine, I want to take into account and keep this edge uh, for the head jam. I only need 32 and a half inches, so I'm gonna cross cut it first. And if you want your jams absolutely perfect, I wouldn't recommend um, staining beforehand. Uh, because you could take like an electric planer and plane it flush with the drywall the whole way. Um, after you kind of get a rough cut, you could use a block plane. So I get my 32 and a half. Now I need it in an inch. So since I'm at an inch at the top and an inch and an eighth at the bottom, I'm gonna mark it out. So I make my mark. Now, since I'm cutting with the track, I need to figure out my offset. So this is, this is the edge I'm saving. So I wanna run my saw, the left side of my saw curve. So actually it'll be the right side of my saw curve which I think it's inch and a quarter, inch and three sixteenths. So from my marks, I need to make a secondary mark at an inch and three sixteenths. So I make my secondary mark and that's where I'll line up my track. So I make my secondary mark. So now I take my straight edge, set it on my mark, Get it somewhat close. And if you had a track saw, this would be nice. Like I said, if you really get on a table saw, you could freehand it. Now, this marks on, it usually takes some finesse, you know, going top and bottom. And you wanna make sure it's good and tight. One thing to be cognizant of, like on a track like this, if you really push your saw into it, you know, it'll flex in the center. So you could either, while you're going, just take your time. Um, don't push over so much and, or you can grab your hand. I like to run a shot back because if you get any uh, sawdust up against this fence, obviously that's gonna um, move your saw blade. So you can check it, start out, see where your blade's at, make sure you're right on, I'm right on. So you can see using a track like that gives you a really clean cut that'll pair up nice. Because obviously if you have a bunch of saw marks, saw blade curves in there, like if you run it through your table saw, you're gonna have to sand those down if you want a really seamless transition. So I got all my pieces cut. I like to double check them. Now what I'm going to do is take my 18 gauge nailer with two inch nails. 
apply glue to both sides real lightly. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, test fit all my pieces, make sure they're right on the money. Um, now what you'll do, I'm going to use some um, tight bond wood glue, apply it to both sides real lightly, come and nail through the face with my 18 gauge nailer with two inch uh, nails. You could also uh, use like trim head screws if you had a real long extension and countersink them and then fill them. Here, since it's only an inch uh, with glue, I think that'll be plenty. If I decide I need some, I'll countersink some little trim screws. But everything's looking right on. Okay, what I'm gonna do is set my uh, two sides and then figure out what the top's gonna be. So I'm using tight bond. And you'll want to keep a wet rag. So the key thing is to line up your head jam and make sure when you're nailing in to keep your nail straight so it's not going to blow out the jam. And make sure and apply pressure to uh, be mindful of your fingers. Now if you're doing paint grade, what you can do is offset this like an eighth and that gives you a nice you know little reveal to lay a bead of caulking in before you paint here I'm going to take a fill stick or some wood filler and then come back and hit it with some stain that's what I'm trying to get just a little bit out of that groove so I have room for wood filler okay so that one's done so you can kind of see what both of these are pine. I tried to match the grain, but you know, the way pine stains, how it takes up stain is just kind of the nature of the beast. Um, so in that tiny little groove, I'm gonna fill that with wood filler, hit it with stain, and then white poly when I'm all done. So if you tend, if you shoot through the jam, like I told you to be careful so you don't, you can peel it back, take your set of nippers, Since that nail, and obviously if you waited to stain, you could sand everything, get it very nice, and then come back and stain it. So I got the glue on. So I cleaned up the glue. Now I'm gonna measure for the top, but I know it's gotta be one inch thick or wide. So I'm 32 and three quarter. So now I'm setting my top, applied the glue. <clears throat> so after you get it on, and basically the key when you're doing it is just to go along and push in and flush jam the one benefit if you would pre-assemble it is you could shoot through or staple through the side jam into the head jam but i cut it tight so it's not going anywhere but so i'm gonna wipe all the glue up top and then fill the seam so during the process of this job i've used this uh, battery powered vacuum and actually the homeowner bought me one and this is the handiest thing um, I'm just sharing this for doing light stuff like around the house, like if you're doing trim work, right now I just sanded all this, sand before I tape. I wanna vacuum all that up with this little shop vac. Runs off a battery, M18. Um, it's got plenty of power for just little things, but it's just so convenient to be able to have it in here without a cord, move it around the house. Um, love it. I wish I would've bought this a long time ago for doing little things like this. Now we don't have to worry about a cord. It packs up real nice. Everything stores in here. Comes with different attachments. Um, you don't have to look at all the stats. I've seen they just made a pack out version. Um, does come with the HEPA air filter. I love it. I mean, if you're 
I never thought of something like this until I started using his. But then it's now it's like, how did I ever get along without it? Just because it's so handy. So, I mean, plenty of power. Light, easy to transport, all self-contained. Um, obviously, it's not going to replace the shop vac. The hose stretches out real nice. But I thought I'd just share that because this has been absolutely awesome. So, just kind of my review on these little cordless shop backs. I would say it's a definite buy if you can afford it to your budget. Um, anyways, I thought I'd throw that little tidbit in there if it helps anybody. If you're kind of deciding on whether it's worth it to buy, what kind of power. Um, I would say I'm kind of surprised at the power due to just being battery. But it's plenty for a little bit of sanding dust, you know, real light stuff. So anyways, that's just my two cents there.